Piriformis syndrome is a literal pain in the butt. If you've had it or you're dealing with it right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a comprehensive approach to fix it for good. Uh, I'm Dr. Daniel Bridge. I'm a chiropractor in Helena, Montana. Subscribe to this channel if you wanna learn how to live a pain-free life. When we're tackling piriformis syndrome, today I'm gonna to give you stretches. We're gonna go over exercises. I'm gonna give you self-massage techniques. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some things to not do to make sure that you can overcome this once and for all. The piriformis muscle is a muscle that starts on the front side of your sacrum right here, and it goes through your butt, and it attaches to this bony bump on the outside of your hip called your greater trochanter. And it's a huge cause of lower back pain. When you go to the dentist, you've got a tooth that's hurting you, it's very easy to pinpoint exactly which tooth is bothering you. Ge uh, lower back pain is a lot more general. Um, when people come into my office with piriformis syndrome, normally they're describing it as hip pain, uh, lower back pain, butt pain, but it just kind of generally, it's like a really tight, achy rubber band in your butt. Like I said, if you've ever had it or you're dealing with it right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It can be very stubborn and very painful. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into different strategies that you can do to take care of this. The first thing we're gonna go over is two stretches. The first stretch is, uh, the first stretch is going to really get into that piriformis muscle and stretch it out. I want you to lay down on your back. Um, if I'm gonna be stretching my right side, I'm gonna prop up my left knee and I'm gonna take my ankle and I'm gonna cross it right over that knee and I'm going to um, bring that knee out to the side and then I'm going to bring this knee and this angle, ankle at the same time towards my chest like so. Now, I have a very tight piriformis muscle, so that's as far as I need to go before I'm feeling a really good stretch there. And you wanna hold it for 15 to 30 seconds. Get a nice light stretch, don't overdo this. Um, if you overdo it, you can make it more angry. It's like a really angry muscle. Uh, but nice gentle stretching on both sides. Instantly, you're gonna feel looser right when you get up off the table. Uh, the piriformis muscle is not, there's lots of muscles around the hip that support the hip. So while we want to make sure we stretch that, there's some different things that we want to do as well. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sit on a firm surface and you're going to bring your, I might fall off this table, you're going to bring your heels together and your elbows go against your knees and you're pressing out with your elbows just a little bit. And as you do that, you're bringing your knees up and together pressing against your elbows and you're going to hold that for 10 seconds. So you're putting a, a counter pressure against those knees. You hold and then you relax and you go a little deeper and you push those elbows out farther and then once again you bring the knees up and you apply some resistance against your elbows. Hold that for 10 seconds, relax and go even deeper and do it again. You want to do that uh, three, three times like I just did and then relax and then just get one more good stretch. So that's gonna uh, stretch some of those inner hip muscles. Those two stretches uh, are gonna be a very good start to start getting those hips loosened up and really targeting that piriformis muscle. All right, now that you've stretched, we really wanna strengthen and stabilize those hips. Strong hips are healthy hips. So the first one we're gonna do is a semi-stiff deadlift. Uh, put your fingers on this bone, your, the crest of your hip right here and then your thumb on your lowest rib and measure that. As you go through the exercise, that should stay at the same distance. They shouldn't come close together. So what I'm gonna do is stand on my right leg, keep this knee locked, and I'm gonna bend forward, making sure that my back is staying straight and I go as far as my leg will let me flex, and then I come back. If you do it wrong, you're gonna feel your back rounding and you're gonna feel your fingers coming closer together. That's not what you wanna do. We're not trying to put flexion and rounding into the back. This is a hip exercise. So we wanna keep our lumbar spine nice and straight. So once again, straight knee, pick this up, bend forward as far as you can go. I can't go very far because I have tight hamstrings and then back up. You're gonna to wanna to do three sets of 10 of that on each leg. All right. The next exercise we're going for is called a posterior lunge. This one is really challenging. It causes a lot of your stabilizing muscles to start freaking out if they're not strong enough. 
So be patient with yourself and just know with time and repetition, you're gonna get stronger and you're gonna get better at this. Uh, put all your weight on one leg, pick your uh, left leg up in this example, and you're gonna lean forward like, uh, excuse me, you're gonna lean backwards like you're gonna sit into a chair. And I like to go slow and try to keep my balance because it wants to go haywire. But I go back, see, losing my balance. Go back, I'm trying not to let this leg touch the ground and I get as low as I comfortably can without bending the knee too much. And then I slowly come back, all the while flexing uh, my glute intentionally. That's what I'm trying to do, is I'm really trying to strengthen up this glute muscle. From the other side, do my left one now, pick the knee up, bring it back, like I'm going to sit down in a chair, nice and slow, and then back up. It's a movement that, uh, like I said, really gets you thinking, it gets your balance going, but it's really good for strengthening these stabilizing muscles, which is gonna take pressure off that piriformis muscle and allow it to rest and to heal. Now that you've done those exercises, what we wanna do is to get into some good self-massage. That tight, taut, piriformis muscle really responds good to some massage. Uh, if you have a massage gun at home, I like to use one with a softer tip. I turn it on, cross that leg up and over, and really work through uh, that area. It, it's kind of a good hurt. It doesn't feel good. It's a tender muscle, so your body's going to like really tell you to stop. Um, but also, at the same time, it feels good. So I like to do it with my hip cross like that, and then also just straight, just really work through all the back of the butt and then move out to the side of the hip, go above that bony bump and work on this muscle. It's called your TFL, your tensor fascia lata, and start. Now, to start out with, I would just keep it light with three to five minutes. You're not, you're not trying to do everything all at once and see how you respond. Give it a day. If you're super sore the next day, then that was too much. Um, otherwise, start going up. Go up to seven minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes, um, and your, your piriformis is going to love you for that. Now, next thing you can do is if you have a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, a racquetball, uh, even a golf ball, um, you're going to get into that uh, stretching position that I showed you where you're laying on your back and cross that leg over and then place that right on your piriformis. You'll be able to find it. You'll move it around until it's in its sore spot. And then you're just going to lean into it lightly. This does not feel good. This feels worse than the massage gun. And you're going to hold for anywhere from 60 to 90 seconds. It's an ischemic compression. You're cutting off blood flow. And then it comes back in. And it's a very healing, relieving sensation for that piriformis muscle. Uh, once again, start, start with 60 seconds and see how your body handles it. Next day, move to 90. But even with 60 seconds on the first time you do it, you're gonna get up, you're gonna be sore, but you should feel some nice relief from doing that. Okay, if you're dealing with piriformis syndrome, here's three things that you should absolutely avoid in order to let that heal and to not get flared up. One is sitting for too long. Most people at work, they sit for too long every single day. That can be a big cause of piriformis syndrome. So if you work at a computer or you drive truck or you find yourself sitting for an extended period of time, break it up. Every 30 minutes, every hour, get up, walk around, do a little bit of stretching. It doesn't need to, need to take 20 minutes, but it can be very valuable to break that up, to give that piriformis a different position, to give it some rest, to give it a little bit of movement. Number two is similar to the first one, but if you're sitting on a lot of hard surfaces like a wooden bench, a bleacher, or if you're sitting on your wallet, even something small like a wallet on one side is going to put your hips off kilter and it can really aggravate and just be needling that piriformis all day long. So move that wallet to the, to the front pocket, bring a cushion to sit on if, you're, if your sitting surface is too hard, and then once again break it up. The third thing is might seem obvious, but you're going to want to avoid activities that are aggravating that piriformis. So if your bike seat is in the wrong position and you're cycling and you're cycling for a long time and you get home and you can just feel it throbbing, that's too much. Um, you're going to want to switch that up. You're want to, going to want to cut the time down. You're going to want to add in some different exercises. Uh, running, downhill running, 
certain yoga poses where you're really putting a lot of strain into that area can flare that up. So use your head. If you do something and it starts to hurt, do less of that, change it up. Don't just keep hitting your head against that wall because if you don't give that piriformis muscle a change and a break, it can be a long, chronic, nagging injury for you. Hopefully, those strategies helped you today to overcome your piriformis syndrome once and for all. Try them out. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional uh, strategies that you've used that have helped you to overcome piriformis syndrome. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends. It really helps us a lot. We really appreciate it. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.